Okay. It is now time for member statements. The member for oh, member for Kitchener Centre is first. Yeah, member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear government, it's time to do better. I've had a lot of people in my riding of Kitchener Centre reach out to tell me that they're worried. They say that they're nervous that the Ford government isn't paying attention to the impact of their decisions. I mean, you folks are in charge of us, literally. So some people have asked me to reach out with a gentle but firm reminder that history teaches us a lot about what happens when we don't use our positions of leadership wisely, when we let power corrupt our morals and our ethics when we don't really lead for the people and just use the tagline instead. Aimé César warned us about this in his play, The Tragedy of King Christophe, and Franz Fanon warned us about this in his book, The Wretched of the Earth. Both of these men taught us that if we aren't careful, if we don't listen to the criticism that people have about our decisions, we'll begin to lead just like those leaders who spend our we spent our lives complaining about. More recent leaders have also warned us of the same. Do you remember when Brian Mulroney confronted uh, Liberal leader John Turner about the same thing in the 19, uh, 1984 debate? You know, when they were debating patronage appointments? And Brian Mulroney said, and I quote, you had an option, sir, to say no, and you chose to say yes to the old attitudes and the old stories of the Liberal Party. Crazy, isn't it? It's time to do better. Our children are watching. Respectfully, Laura May Lindo, MPP Kitchener Centre. <laughs> Thank you. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Saturday, no November 24th, I attended the Chinese Culture and Arts Association's annual show entitled Heartbeat of the Yellow River. The event took place at Plato Markham Theatre in my riding of Markham Unionville. It was an excellent showcase of traditional form of Chinese culture, but also contemporary interpretations performed by young Chinese Canadians. The Yellow River is one of the longest rivers in the world and runs through nine provinces in China. Chinese civilization is believed to have developed and originated around the Yellow River, which is the reason why it is so highly regarded in Chinese heritage. Mr. Speaker, the heartbeat of the Yellow River Gala was a special event for me because it showed me the traditional Chinese culture is not the only being preserved by young Chinese Canadian, but is also helping itself to reflect the experience of young people that identify with both their Chinese ancestry and Canadian nationality. To live and serve in Ontario, which not only uphold diversity, but champions it, brings me a great amount of joy and honour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Windsor to come see. Well, Speaker, I'm in a bit of a legislative haze. We've been here something like 150 days and there's some rhyme, but no real reason, but we tend to get a little silly as we approach the holiday season. So listen up and you'll hear it. I'm finally getting into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> now, some MPPs already have their Christmas lists. And yes, some are asking for edible cannabis. <laughs> and the holidays, whether you celebrate them or not, in this house, we have been dealing with recreational pot. Now, no one claims to be smoking that wacky tobacco unless we get hauled away by our sergeant-at-arms, the nonpartisan Miss Jackie. <laughs> but for some, it is with sadness that we've hopped aboard this reefer madness. I mean, first, the Premier cancelled our summer vacation. And Speaker, they're always imposing time allocation and doing all of those standing ovations. <laughs> and then someone with a lust for power kept us here late, well past the midnight hour, passing laws with no restitution, challenging the Canadian Constitution. A coherent agenda has been a puzzle. Ministers at times somewhat muzzled. Still, the government house leader, the Quinty Grinch, won't let up, not even an inch. <laughs> the New Year promises to be even harder, especially if we see more challenges to the Canadian Charter. And for that, I am at a loss. 
Why do we have all of this legislative chaos? And as you know, there's always one gift that's impossible to find. Speaker, if you don't mind this year, I'm guessing it'll be that elusive buck of beer. I just can't find it anywhere. Oh, gosh, darn it. I forgot to say Merry Christmas to you, Speaker, <laughs> the gracious Ted Arnott. And before my memory completely fades, just like that liberal bill on cap and trade, to all the MPs and the staff in the hall, the pages on the left and right, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> member statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Yay! Speaker. Yay! I'm dreaming of a balanced budget, just like the ones we used to know, where the ledgers glisten and the bureaucrats listen to messaging from the PO. That's what we call the Premier's office around here. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a province open for business, with every government bill we write, may your investments be merry and bright, and may all your red tape turn to white. I'm dreaming of reduced traffic. With every trip that I take, may our roads be clear and bright, and may all our subway plans get a green light. Yay! I'm dreaming of a PC Christmas, just like the ones we used to know, with friends we hold dear, and plenty of good cheer, with help from lots of drinks like Baca beer. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa. And uh, I have to mention, I always talk about the Jewish community here, and I have to say that uh, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas was wit written by Irving Berlin. His father was a very famous cantor. Um, and at least half of the very well-known Christmas songs were written by Jewish composers. And I think I mentioned once here in the legislature that I believe that if you ask them, if you could ask them, if they were still alive and you said, why, why did you all write so many Christmas songs? They would say, it's a living. <laughs> member statements. Mm -hmm. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this past Saturday, 14,000 people took to the streets across Ontario uh, to oppose the direction this government has charted out for francophone rights. Uh, le plus grande manifestation. The biggest protest uh, had in, uh, place in my riding in Ottawa Centre, where 5,000 people met to, uh, on the 1st of December. There was the great Jean-Claude Perrault the uh, former president of the Postal Workers of Canada. And my, uh, my esteemed colleague has thrown down a poetry challenge that uh, our friend from Thornhill has picked up, so I'll end with a tribute to Jean-Claude. It's taken from a book. It's one of my children's favorite books. It's called The Great Reindeer Rebellion. <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas, and somewhere up north, dear Santa was frantic. He paced back and forth. He had just heard news that he sure didn't like. It seemed that the reindeer were going on strike. Oh no, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, even Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, they said, we're finished. We've had quite enough of pulling your sleigh with such big, heavy stuff. No pulling or flying, Santa. We're in this together. So with that, Speaker, I'll just note that our friends who work for the federal government, the Canadian Postal Workers Union, have just been legislated back to work. And the truth of that particular labor dispute that our federal friends at the federal government level have mismanaged is that too many postal workers this holiday season are going to be hurt in the course of work. And I hope the message they hear loud and proud from the people here in Ontario is that people in Ontario support postal workers. They support people delivering presents, presents this holiday season. And if the federal government turns its back to you in Ontario, we treat you with love. The member from Orléans. First, I would like to start by congratulations 
congratulating the new 2018-2022 City of Ottawa Council, which I had the pleasure to attend the inaugural ceremony last night. I, w I will look forward to work with the new Municipal Council in Orléans, uh, Matinola, Cartier uh, in Orléans, and for a third, Stephen Blake in Cumberland. I to know that during the month of November, four of my constituents were honoured. Brian Tardif and Marie-Claude Doucet received the Order of Ottawa, while Aldege Bellefeuille was presented with the Brian Kilray Award for Excellence in Coaching on November 22nd. Also, Trema Cousineau uh, was decorated on the 16th of November for the Excellent Prize of Ontario for her contribution to the Francophone Communion. I would not be remiss to mention the moment that was most touching, my participation in the many protests of resistance in Ottawa. I was with my colleagues and about 5,000 people in Ottawa. More than 40 places, Francophones and Francophones in Ontario, found uh, gathered to uh, ask that their rights be uh, respected. We want to have solidarity and we want an independent commissioner and we demand a first uh, uh, French language University of Ontario. We are and we will be, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Oh. Member statements, the member for Brantford Brant. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For more than 50 years, Christmas Baskets has been providing food, providing food and a holiday dinner and children's toys to families in Brant, Brant, the Brant County, Brantford, and Six Nations. First day registrations for Christmas Baskets were at near record levels as the holiday program got off to a late start in Brantford, Brant. Two 50-foot trailers filled with tables, desks, and cardboard boxes of toys and other items have been unloaded, and staff have finally secured a home to operate this year's program, which delivers baskets of food and other Christmas goods to more than 1,500 local families in need. Registration for the baskets usually begins November 1st. Christmas basket staff began looking in October, but no space could be found for the program. A deal was finally struck to use space in the former Sears store at the Linden Park Mall. Groups of volunteers eager to get their to their holiday work already had many boxes unpacked and tables were starting to be filled with new and used toys, knitted wear and small gifts for parents. Shopping carts wrapped in tinsel were laden with other items still to be organized. The entrance for Christmas baskets is at the rear service entrance door of the former Sears store. Donations of toys can be dropped off there. Registration is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. To register, valid identification must be shown for each member of a household as well as proof of income and address. For more information about registration, call 519-751-4357 or 519-751-0000. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for York Southwestern. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last month, we received the devastating news that the Ford Conservatives plan to eliminate the Office of the Provincial Advocate for Children and Youth. The Office of the Child Advocate is essential to the health and safety of Ontario's most vulnerable children because their mandate is proactive, not reactive. This is the difference between saving children's lives and asking why once it is too late. As one of, of the uh, child care practitioners in my riding wrote to me last week, the Office of the Child Advocate listens to the voices of children and youth and is integral to the work that needs to be done to increase safeguards for these vulnerable population and help us do our jobs better. This is not a luxury item. Our children and youth deserve to be heard and protected. And yet, as the Conservatives argue that Ontario is too poor to provide this essential service for our most vulnerable children, they are providing a $275 million tax break for themselves and their wealthy donors. This decision is another in a disturbing pattern of silencing young people and, debri and depriving them of a critical information and resources. It begs the question whether the cutting for the advocate for children and youth is intended to save money or to prevent independent scrutiny for this government's hopeful, harmful policies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Member statements. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. As this year comes to a close and the holiday season approaches, it's time that we start thinking about others. This the season to give and the season for the people. This year, my office will be hosting a holiday toy and food drive for those in need in our community. We have partnered up with the Salvation Army and the Mississauga Food Bank this year for our holiday drive. Hit it, Sam. You, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. MPPs are coming to town. They're making them bills. They're checking them twice. They're going to bring down the hydro price. MPPs are coming to town. <laughs> now, it's time that we all get off that naughty list and on to the nice one. You can drop off unused and unwrapped toys and non-perishable food items to our constituency office. Now let's come together and celebrate this season the way it was intended to be celebrated together. Happy holidays. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Sorry to uh, disappoint you, Mr. Speaker. I won't be singing my member statement today, but uh, I will say that I am pleased to have the opportunity to rise today and speak about our government's recent hunting and fishing announcement, that we have officially launched online sales of outdoors cards and hunting and fishing license, uh, licensing products via our huntandfishontario.com website. Along with the countless anglers and hunters who populate my riding of Kitchener's, Kitchener Conestoga, I share an enthusiasm for the outdoors. Some of my fondest memories growing up were fishing with my father and grandparents on Lake Nipissing in northern Ontario. Look forward to creating many new memories with my own children. And streamlining this process to acquire fishing license or game tags here in Ontario will make it easier for more people to get outside and enjoy the natural beauty of our province. I think the most convenient aspect of the initiative is the fact that consumers can now have access to a single outdoors card. The online portal is a one-stop shop for outdoors cards, fishing licenses, and small game licenses. I love one-stop shop shops, Mr. Speaker. My private member's bill, Bill 50, will increase consumer access by allowing motor vehicle dealers to register sold vehicles for their consumers online as well, and I'm very happy our government is prioritizing this. My riding is loaded with rod and gun clubs, seven of them to be exact. In Waterloo Region, there are a total of 10 hunting and fishing clubs and 15 outdoor stores. They all stand to benefit from a more streamlined and efficient process. On top of moving hunting and fishing licenses, uh, licensing online, our government has also recently announced that members of the Canadian Armed Forces, past and present, will be enjoying free recreational fishing in early 2019. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon.